David Austin Handbook of Roses, 2020, Catherine's Garden of LWS. Welcome and dream with me of roses for 2020 and subscribe. On this cold January evening, my David Austin catalog came in. What great timing. And what will warm my heart besides the smell of these fragrant candles? But also what will warm my heart is just looking at these beautiful blooms and looking through my David Austin catalog or handbook. So come with me as we journey through and dream of June and roses. Hello and welcome to Catherine's Garden. It's so good to have you here with me today. And I received my David Austin Handbook of Roses that came in for 2020. I have been very fortunate to have a large selection of roses in my garden, but there is always room for a new one, and especially a David Austin rose. Today, on January 18th, 2020, at this particular time, it is 20 degrees Fahrenheit and cloudy, and it's about to snow. Wow. But you know what? I'm so fortunate because today my David Austin Rose hand catalog came in. Now, in the past, I well, last year I had this one, the Handbook of Roses 2019, and I introduced it to you all um, and spoke about it and took you through the catalog. Well, each year they have new, um, a new design and new update of the catalog. So uh, last year they showed in the handbook all of the different David Austin catalogs starting in 1962 all the way through here until uh, 2011 and uh, these catalogs are just so extensive they really tell you all about the different types of roses and um, I really love uh, looking through it and I've actually looked forward to receiving the new catalog the 2020 David Austin uh, catalog handbook of roses and this is the 21st edition and this is a USA edition um, so uh, they cater to us here in the United States of America. And uh, these David Austin roses um, are cultivated here so that they can do well in our climate and, and in our country here in the United States if you're in the United States of America. I love the symbol. David Austin. It's beautiful. And right on the cover, it has what is called the key. And I think that this is great. It tells you about the different sizes 
the types of roses the very tall ramblers they get to 21 to 40 feet and then you have the tall climber or the ramp the rambler and then you have the median climber the short climber the English tree rose and the very large shrub I like that I have been fortunate to have different types of roses in my own personal garden here at Catherine's Garden of LWS, my urban cottage garden. And I really enjoy the fragrance and the look and the appeal of the cabbage style roses. This is the Peace Rose. As I look through this handbook of roses, the David Austin handbook of roses. I might just get one this year. I do want to take you through the the book with me. This the handbook. It is so attractive. Look at those roses. I love roses, especially um, in June here in the Northeast. I am in the Northeast um, zone 6 I believe I'm zone between zone 6A and B I'm in the Boston area and um, my roses can be sensitive sometimes depending on the weather um, but um, I have had some success with roses um, some years are better than others but I do love in the month of June when my roses begin to bloom. And I try to have like a succession of blooms so that I have different rose types throughout the year. So here it, in the catalog, it does give you some insight as to the different types of roses here. The very tall, the tall climber, the medium climber, the short climber, and um, just giving you a sense of height and shrubs. And it says here, welcome to the 2020 Handbook of Roses, your guide to our expensive range of expansive. <laughs> I guess it could be considered expensive for some, but it's an expansive range of beautiful, fragrant, inspiring roses. And that's um, a picture of David Austin. He passed away last year. Um, and um, December of 2018 he passed away but he's left such a legacy uh, for himself and his family and for the world um, it is really such a, a blessing and um, you you have a five-year guarantee expert advice and aftercare bred in England and grown in the USA. So staying true to our roots, our roots are bred in, in Shurstford, England, then grown in the USA for your enjoyment. So I, I believe that helps with the adaptability. So in the handbook, it, it gives a, a lot of information. It definitely is a handbook. Introduction of Roses, Stars in the Garden, David Austin and the English Rose, David Austin, A Life Led in Full Bloom, What Makes an English Rose, The Introduction to Bloom Style and Fragrance Types, Introduction to Rose Types, uh, 20 Years in the United States, New Roses for 2020, and then a spotlight rambling English countryside, spotlight purple partnering plants, and spotlight modern arches. Um, so it really gives a lot of beauty here. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Roses, stars of the garden. And it's true that roses have a classic beauty. They're complementary to the garden. And something very much, um, to look forward to. I love when 
as I said, June comes around and I know that my roses are going to bloom along with all of the other companion plants. And there's a certain coloring of that time. The roses in my garden and roses in general tend to be of white to pinks, um, to um, apricots. Um, then you have your deep colored roses. So this is a picture of David Austin and the English rose. Very nice. And um, he's just, I mean, this is a man of passion that he believed in roses and to see how he has just taken it fully through his life. I think he um, died at the age of 98 and um, he also left a legacy for his family and others and um, just you know when you do something with a passion and you love it and you help others to love it that he the Bible says that the, you will be brought bet before queens and kings and David Austin a senior is here with Queen uh, Elizabeth at the Chelsea Flower Show in 2016. It says, every day I marvel at my good fortune to have been able to make a life out of breeding roses. My greatest satisfaction is to see the pleasure my roses give to gardeners and rose lovers worldwide. And even to the Queen of England, that is fantastic. What a life legacy. And then it says here, look at that beautiful rose. What makes an English rose? English rose is the term given to roses bred by David Austin. My goal remains the same, to try to develop the healthiest roses possible without compromising their beauty, their fragrance, grace, and most importantly, their charm david austin wow and i think he's really stayed true to this breeding an english rose and then i like this his signature style beautiful large many petaled old rose style blooms rich and varying fragrance good health abundant repeat flowering and that's everything that we want in a rose especially in the garden I love to see big thick juicy roses and that are thick and cabbage like in shape that are rich and varied in fragrance oh in June when my roses come out it's just the whole garden is so fragrant when I walk around the corner and enter into the garden I could just smell and whiff the roses, the smell of the roses, just so outstanding. And so there are different uh, shapes of roses, but then there are also different uh, fragrances. So you have the fruity, the old rose, the myrrh, the musk, the tea rose. And in perfumes, you tend to mostly see or smell the tea rose, that scent of a rose. And you have your shrub roses. And I love um, shrub roses because they kind of like just fill the landscape and they, um, they work well with others, the shrub roses. Then you have the climbing rose, the rambling rose, the English tree rose. And that's a really new or modern way of um, having roses, especially if um, you want to create height in your garden to have the tree rose is a, a good thing. So the new roses for 2020. This is so pretty. Emily Brunette Bronnet Bronte Bronte. <laughs> Sorry to butcher her name.
Isn't that a beautiful rose? And that's in honor of this woman. It says the Bronte Society asked us to name the rose to celebrate the bicentennial of the birth of the novelist. And she is the novel, uh, her much loved novel, Withering Heights, was published in 1847, a year before her untimely death at the age of 30. Yes, I've heard of Withering Heights. I think we'd had to, had to read it um, in, um, in school, in high school. And here are some others. Here's another one. Isn't that pretty? The yellows. I love this picture. Check that out. It says, I know I said I was only going to look at the new tottering by Gently Rose, but it's a woman's prerogative to change her mind, darling. <laughs> That's cute. The Mill on the Floss. What I like about this catalog is that they offer this information he, here, the keys, the idea for rose border, mixed border, pots and containers, and shady areas. Kind of give you some um, hints on how to really uh, utilize that, um, the rose. And we have the spotlight on rambling English countryside. And it talks about the purple partnering plants. I love purples in my garden along with the roses. As I said, at this time of year, uh, when my roses are out, it tends to have the soft muted colors of the purples and the blues and the pinks together with the roses. So the roses offer um, a big, you know, a big bold splash of color. Then you have um, the, the complementary uh, plants surrounding it. Isn't that pretty? The modern arches. Oh, so beautiful. Oh my. To have a rose garden, it is possible. Are you willing to invest? Of course, it's going to take a little time, a little energy, but it is such a wonderful thing to consider. The Directory of Roses. How to use this handbook. And, um, the different ways that you can get your roses. You could get it as a bare root or a two quart rose. I tend to like the bare root style of roses. I've had some success with bare roots. Um, but then, you know, like some of my other roses, like the knockout roses, I've had them as plants, potted plants, and they do well too. I think it's just a matter of giving the roses what they need and they will produce for you. And the, this, I like the bloom color. This, this is so nice to know that you can have all of this as far as the, the color, the shadings of the roses from the pale pink to the rich yellow and the apricot color in between. And then the rose size, the bloom size. This handbook is just fantastic. I mean, the amount of information you can get from it. And it talks about the plant hardiness zones here. And I am in right up here in Massachusetts area. So that's the six. 
zone six right there You have the shrub roses. Aren't they beautiful? Absolutely pretty. I love this um, catalog because, or handbook, because they give you suggestions of how you can place the roses in your garden. And uh, you can even put roses in containers too. Look at that. It's so dreamy. Oh, this is a pretty rose. Some of these roses actually look like peonies to me. It has like that peony s s size and also peony shape. Very full and rich. So these are the shrub roses. And we can see the different colors. This is beautiful. I love that one. It's called the Lady Gardener. It's very pretty. Oh, look at this white rose. Oh, Desdemona. I am butchering its name. Hallelujah. <laughs> It's so beautiful. Look at that. Wet Winchester Cathedral. I've heard about the Winchester Cathedral roses. And um, I used to listen to this gardening show. And this lady just loved roses. She was from Canada. And she talked about the Winchester Cathedral roses that were filling um the Winchester Cathedral but also in her garden and just the smell of it and she just filled a whole corner of her garden with just Winchester Cathedral roses oh wow this is so pretty look at that Ooh. Charles Darwin So now we have the climbing and the rambling rose. Strawberry, Strawberry Hill, <laughs> English climbing rose. Yeah, I've heard of that. Graham Stewart Thomas, that's an, let me go back. That is a rose that we've heard a lot about. The English climbing rose. Then you have the English tree rose. Pretty, huh? The rose for specific situations with the arches. Could you imagine having a wedding or a party or some sort of, you know, I don't know, a garden party with all these beautiful roses? So you have um, for best fragrance, best health, 
best smaller shrubs, best for flowering, very large shrubs, rose borders. I mean, this handbook just gives you so much information. Pre-selected rose variety bundles, English shrub uh, bundles, and then some tools and gifts and rose care. So if you wondering how to maintain your roses, um, books, and suggestions, and prints. Wow. The plant hardiness, rose care region, the northeast, this is up my area here. Maine, New York, New Jersey, Vermont, Massachusetts. Um, giving ideas and suggestions. Planting of shrubs, how to go about planting the shrubs. The general rose care and giving it rose food. I'm gonna have to do that. Make sure I get some rose food for my um, plants this year. Deadheading, mulching, troubleshooting. What to expect. Some idea of rose design. How to uh, discover um, the rose gardens. The home of English roses. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. I could imagine how that must smell walking through. Ooh. Yes, it says, wander amongst the blooms, engulfed in the unforgettable aroma of this magnificent rose garden. Wow, maybe one of these days I'll get to this location, visit this rose garden. Isn't that beautiful? But I'm, I'm visiting it through this handbook. <laughs> Plant center and gifts, the restaurants and tea rooms, the golden rain, 36 years of RHS flower show. I've heard about that um, through Monty Don and the, um, the BBC. You get to see a little bit and hear a little bit. Well, that's pretty much it. And then I like this here at the back. Um, they give you the index by color so that you can kind of get a, an idea of what type or design or shape of rose that you would like to have in your garden. And um, I think this is so, so useful. Look at that. So that's it and um, you can actually get your own catalog from the David Austin um, company and uh, just at what all I did was that I went to their website and I um, I went to their website and I filled out the information and they sent me the catalog and so that's why I'm not able to share it with you and so this is the David Austin Handbook of Roses for 2020. Absolutely beautiful. <sighs> so now I have two. You know that these are treasures. I have the Handbook of Roses for 2019 and now the Handbook of Roses for 2020. absolutely beautiful thank you David Austin company and uh, thank you for coming with me through this journey through this handbook and yeah I recommend that you go and um, order yourself a catalog 
If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe. And comment down below, do you have a David Austin rose in your garden? And if so, let me know what kind and what are your suggestions. And then thank you so much for watching um, this video. Please subscribe to Catherine's Garden and see you next time here in my urban cottage garden, Catherine's Garden. Bye.